quick drop on that one. I hope everybody's getting off to a great start. As for me, I got my week started on yesterday as usual. I uh, was blessed and honored to speak to a group of youth that I've been able to minister to and speak to and help develop for nearly 10 years now. Actually, it's been 10 years. 10 years now and I've watched them grow up. I've watched them come through middle school, high school and now to college and I've watched the next group come up behind them and also be able to take and it is first and foremost an, a blessing and an honor uh, for people to trust me uh, with their young people who are so impressionable uh, to be able to impart upon impart upon them something that uh, can literally groom and grow them, develop them, and empower and prepare them to go into a world that's inherently hostile towards them and not only compete, but win. So I'm really, truly blessed by that. Before I continue on, you know the routine. If you like what you hear, you like what you see, click the like button, click the share button. If you believe in the work that we're doing through the Odyssey Project and the Black Voice platform, please look in the description box and see how you can give to support our ongoing work uh, that has continued over three decades. Now, when I'm speaking to these kids, the it's an entire youth month. And I had the day to myself yesterday, so I got to really truly unpack the theme for this particular year. Every year we do a different theme, and this theme is stewardship. And obviously the go-to when people start talking about stewardship is money, material things, things that you are given or you earn absolutely important to understand the value in stewarding your money, stewarding your opportunities, and stewarding uh, the things that you are blessed with to get the most out of them and taking care of them and, and maximizing them and all that good stuff. And I, I'm all for that, that. I teach people to do that for a living, but I talk to them about two specific things. Stewarding their gift Nobody thinks about that. Stewarding their gift and stewarding pain. And when I talk to them, and I'm gonna touch on that real briefly because I wanna share that with you. But in, in talking to them, I realize that so many of our youth have no vision outside of the darkness and the narrowness that has been presented to them through media, through experiences, through a one-sided lens that only sees what's given to them and not what's possible for them. And it, it, it really pains me that we haven't nurtured a vision and we, we aren't nurturing the gift. We, we aren't nurturing these things, but we have got to do a better job of nurturing vision, encouraging vision, uh, facilitating vision. We are so inundated with the rat race. We're so inundated with just getting by, just managing, just dealing with whatever's in front. We're not seeing the path out. That's what the vision is. The vision is elevation. The vision is about growth. The vision is about expansion. The vision is about empowerment. The vision is a part of God's way of giving you an image of your destiny, but you have to be willing to reach out and grab hold of it. And what I see in so many youth when I'm around is the vision is blurred. The vision is obscured by poverty, obscured by pain, obscured by trauma, obscured by uh, 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 the view or perspective through which they're experiencing life. Their paradigms are stark contrast to the visions of other children. And we have to be responsible for stoking a vision that takes them beyond the parameters of their community, their neighborhoods, their inner city dwellings to something much greater. We are responsible for that. And, and, and that's why I love being in front of kids because I want them to, I want them to uncap what's there. 
But in speaking to them about stewarding their gift, it's about, hey, look, what are you doing with what God gave you? I mean, what are you doing with that thing that's naturally innate a part of you that makes you different than everybody else? The thing that if I were to ask someone that uh, 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 outside of you about you, they would say they are exceptional at this. And what are you doing with it? What do you plan on doing with it? How are you cultivating it? How are you growing it? How are you developing it in yourself so that it can be an unstoppable force in your life? Uh, what 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 is uh, uh, scripture says that your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. Um, that's that. There's some power in that. The gift will expand your territory when you are willing to embrace it, take hold of it, and use it. And then I talk to them about stewarding pain. That's another thing nobody ever thinks about or talks about. You have to be able to steward. Steward means to properly manage. And if you don't manage your pain, it will show up in your life consistently and constantly over the course of your life. You have to learn how to steward your pain. And what does that mean? That, that means you manage your pain. You develop a, a process through which you conquer your pain. You're not going to stop pain. Pain is inevitable, but suffering is a choice. Suffering is this thing when we tend to literally identify with the thing that's causing the pain at a level that we give it so much power that we can't shake it that it becomes a constant narrative in our conversations we constantly talk about what it's doing to us it places us in a victim mentality and we are constantly being overridden by it. but when you understand you have the power to not only manage your pain but conquer your pain it means that i can't avoid the pain but how i use the pain and i was explaining to somebody this to somebody yesterday there's a way that you can literally transform your pain because everything is energy everything you deal with is energy and when you get pain pain is one one element a component of energy that produces itself and gives you a certain type of feeling you feel it in your body you feel it in the stresses in your thought processes you feel it in the anxiety that you're experiencing on a physiological level pain is an energy but here's the beautiful thing about it when you learn that you can transcend your pain people always ask me man you just went through this you lost your mom you lost your brother you just went through a divorce you're going through how do you smile how do you move is because the pain is real but i've learned how to transcend the pain all it means is i rise above the pain and see it for what it is it's a force driving me somewhere i choose where it drives me i can choose to let it elevate me and push me to newer spaces and newer heights or i can allow it to push me down and crush me i get to choose that nobody can stop my choice so when i choose that then i i i, I, I transcend it and when i transcend it i now have the power to transform it remember you don't destroy energy you can transform energy, you can redirect energy, but you can't destroy it. So it's going out. When that pain comes in, it, ev it is eventually going out. Will it go out as pain that will hurt someone else because I got hurt? Or will it go out as a transformation of a new type of energy that now wants to heal people, help people, empower people? You get to control that. You get to decide how pain impacts you. You don't get to stop it from hitting you. Now you can make it hit you more than it should by making dumb choices, but you're going to experience it. The trouble is, will your pain become suffering? And so I talked to them about that. And man, to, to, to be able to talk to these kids and, and get them to respond, that's the beauty about it. You, 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 you would look at the way we view our kids and you think, man, these kids don't want to listen. These kids don't hear, man. These kids want to take pictures with me. These kids want to hang out. Uh, these kids had something to give back and share. These children are primed. They are primed to have seeds planted in them. And we are failing at doing the planting. We're going to want to harvest at some point, but we haven't planted. That's my challenge. That's my push. That's what I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, stressing. And let's make something great happen, man. We we got all these things we could talk about that's going wrong, but we got an opportunity to totally change the trajectory of our existence by how we manage and handle our children. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get off. Like I said, click the like button, click the share button if it's something that you enjoy. Also, if you believe in the work we're doing on an ongoing basis, we've got so much going on with mental health, intimate uh, partner uh, violence and homicide, um, 
the miseducation of our youth on so many different levels, mass incarceration and the reduction of recidivism and so many other things that we have been working on and doing for decades and we're still out there doing it. We're still out there taking people in. We're still out there advocating and we need your support. Go to the description box and show some love. On that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here, you guys. Thank you for sharing with me. Thank you for uh, entrusting me with a uh, few minutes of your time. On that note, I'm out. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.